So here we go. Uh, how to trade bounces. And it seems illogical to make this, but I, <laughs> I hear a lot of people losing a lot of money on trading bounces. So let's review how to trade the bounces properly to where you're running into a high rate of success. As always, entertainment purposes only. This is not financial advice. If you trade this method or if you trade any of my methods, your penis will fall off and... You will go broke and lose all of your money, so don't do it. Now, that said, go ahead and do it. The Bounce Trio, and I say the Bounce Trio because in theory you can add a line every half a centimeter on your chart and you'll, and you'll just, bounces are useless at that point. So for the stream's purposes, I have the Professor line, the Green Zone, and Volume and Balances. And that's it. And that's it. The three. And the reason I do these three is because they have proven themselves over the past, uh, what is it, two and a half weeks that I've been pulling data here. Professor lines seem to be the best bang for the buck. Like, they seem, you know, as far, again, as far as last two weeks, that could completely fucking change next month, next year, next two years. Uh, you know, if the... All right, but yeah, so green zones and professor lines between these two, they seem to have an absolute win, so we're going to be focusing on that volume and balances as well. So between all of these, they seem to be a reliable source, so we'll do these three. Now, professor lines come from day trading for success. This is uh, from the Million Dollar Margin Club. Oddly enough, you don't have to buy the book. They offer the whole book for free on their YouTube channel, which I don't know why. I guess they don't want to sell a book. I mean, I should if I know, but link the description for the YouTube channel. Well, they'll show you every damn page in the book. At uh, you know, I I didn't write, I didn't do that. They did that. So you know, they're they're their own copyright owners. They can show your whole book and fuck it. You don't have to buy it. So link in the description for that. So what the fuck is a professor line? If you really didn't want to read the book in the first place, you go to Daily Candles on Trade of Eight. And, or, or, sorry, yeah, Trade of 8 on Trading View, whatever uh, platform you got. And you look at yesterday and the day before yesterday, and you want to find the high and the low between yesterday and the day before yesterday. And then you draw a pivot point, sorry, you draw a Fibonacci retracement across those lines. So, in other words, here's the high right here from yesterday, right? The, yesterday's candle's high. Two days ago, the day before yesterday, there is. That candle's low. So you're going to do a, a Fibonacci between here and there. And it ends up looking like that. So let's do this live. So here we are on five-minute candles. Go ahead and switch this to day candles. And now you have that. Let's resize it. So you can see up here we're on day candles. You see the D? The big D. Uh, and here's the Fibonacci retracement. So here's yesterday. Here's the day before yesterday. So I'm going to go left to right. So I'm going to go from the bottom up to the tippy top. So the tippy top is the top, the highest of yesterday and the day before that, which is there. The bottom is right there. And I have extra lines down here on mine because, you know, if it goes beyond the Fibonacci, I want the extra Fibonacci to be there. So if we dive down, I have a little bit of extra room and you could put this at the top as well by fiddling in your settings for fib retracement and add some negative ones in addition to the positive ones as well. So let's do this for 10 day. Everybody laugh at my scribble. Here's one day past, that's yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we need the highest level. We need the highest level in the past 10 days, which is going to be there. And then, well, not exactly. It's going to be there. We need the lowest level in the past 10 days, which is obviously going to be here. Let's do this with a Fibonacci real quick and uh, have some fun with all that shit. Got a Fibonacci retracement, go left to right. So uh, the lowest point is going to be here. So we're going to start there and we're going to draw it up to the highest point. So in the past 10 days, this right here is the highest point. And then this right here is the lowest point. So you got the highest point, the lowest point in 10 days, and you have both of them on screen. And that is professor line. So let's renew this over here. We have the professor line here, highest point, 10 days, highest point, lowest point, two days, 10 days. 
And there you have it. Now, the other thing we want to do is, is to call it a candle gap, otherwise known as a volume imbalance. So that's basically a gap between two candles. And Al Brooks calls this a sign of strength, where you're in a big hurry to go up and you're in such a hurry that you leave a candle gap. And this also leaves a fair value gap just by the nature of, of what it is and whatnot. So instead of drawing a fair value gap, I like candle gaps a little bit better because it's cleaner. It's one single line and it does a pretty good job. Take you back to the charts to show you that it does indeed have a pretty good result. I mean, you go in here and the volume and balance, the candle gaps, and it has a pretty high ratio for success. Not as good as professor lines, but it still has a good rate of success. So Aaron D. Uh, from YouTube gave us the idea that uh, price will come back to the candle gaps quite frequently. So that's what I use as far as um, checking it out and having some fun over there with that. So that's another line we could bounce. So the main thing here is don't guess and don't predict. You look at yesterday, for example, I got a couple of people in Discord. They were going long or they were going short on a long trend. And, and they were just getting owned, right? You know, you're going to blow up an account and shit. You don't guess, don't predict. You need to see some evidence. And that's what we're going to cover. You need to see some evidence. The more evidence, the better. And we're going to cover what evidence do you need to see and what evidence is better than other evidence as far as a bounce, right? So you have to wait for the evidence. Don't guess. And another thing to realize as well Let's say we have a huge uptrend. The uptrend's been going a long time. You just have uptrend, 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 and you bounce. That's probably a pullback. And I think that's something that not a lot of people do. They're like, okay, all right, all right, this is going to be huge. We're going to go down for 100 points. The reality is, is if you've been in a trend and you already have other pullbacks, if you bounce against a line and you do come back down, is probably a pullback. So that's the thing, right? Unless you're in a ranging day where it's just going like this all day, then uh, it's probably not a pullback. It probably is just continuing the range. But when you have just a straight up trend and you bounce, I mean, you're going to get one or two, maybe three candles off of it, but realize there's a good, good chance. There's a higher chance that it's a pullback than there is um, that it is going to be a complete reversal. So uh, I think Al Brooks talks about that. I think it's like 70, 80% chance that it's going to be a pullback on a very strong trend. And a very strong trend is one that keeps going. It's had multiple pullbacks already. And uh, it's just continuing on. It's been going the whole day, half the day, hours and hours. You just don't want to fuck with that. You want to get in the trend, stay in the trend. If you get a bounce, that's probably a pullback. So what evidence do we got? Number one, we got an absorption bubble. And a bubble is basically a big block of orders. And a green bubble is a block of green orders, which is fine. If I have a big block of green orders, I should see a big green candle. You know what I'm saying? It's like if somebody orders 20 cheeseburgers at fucking McDonald's and they pull up, you expect them to pay for 20 cheeseburgers. You don't expect them to like run off and drive off real quick or something like that, right? Absorption bubble. If you got a lot of orders, that's fine. Give me a big candle. And when I don't get a big candle, that could be absorption. So I call that absorption bubble. When it wicks off the area of the bubble of the price with all the big orders, it doesn't like it. You'll have a big green bubble for a wick off the upside, a big red bubble for a wick off the downside. Candle body under candle body. This is the big thing. Again, a lot of people get too excited. They don't wait for candle body under candle body. And what that means basically is you have a red candle under another red candle, uh, you know, literally a candle body underneath a candle body. So if we go over here and I'm looking for a balance here, I need this candle body to be underneath the other candle body for a balance to the downside. I don't want to risk it for the biscuit and just trade based upon one single red candle because right here you'd got screwed. Right here you'd have gotten screwed. So I want a candle body underneath a candle body. And that's what that is. A wick off the line area. If I come up to a, a bounce line and I wick off of it, like a big wick like this right here, a big wick like this right here, that's huge. That's, that's advantageous. 
And then we have various shit on the stream from squeezing McSquozies, trampolines, various symbols, stairs. Doji 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 is a great reversal. So we have a Doji here, you have a Doji here, and you have a Doji here. So a bunch of Dojis in a row, even if it's one Doji, is just excellente, excellente for seeing a loss of momentum. The Dojis are going sideways because that's called Doji 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 Anima. And the last thing is a Delta Intensity Spike, which is the graph on the bottom on the stream. If you... If you have a big spike in the delta intensity, like this big green, uh, that indicates an end of a trend or possibly the beginning of a trend. It's not 100%. Nothing in trading is 100%. But usually that indicates that you have one final oof push to into the end zone for the red, right? And that usually is accompanied by a big-ass candle. So that's called an exhaustion candle by Al Brooks. So you have little candle, little candle, little candle, then you have oof, a big push into the end zone with a big delta intensity spike that could be, could be, that's one piece of evidence that we may be losing momentum. So yeah, a couple of examples and we'll get some, uh, a quiz. <laughs> we'll see if you can ID good bounce, no good bounce. So yeah, we're coming up, obviously it's an uptrend. We have a down uh, red thing here and the Captain Obvious moment where you're coming up, you're bouncing. But the Captain Obvious moment is when the resulting candle, so you have a red candle down hitting a line and the green candle that's going the opposite direction is bigger than the candle that struck the line. So this candle strikes the line, this candle's leaving the line when this candle leaving the line is bigger. So it's a good thing, a little bit of an engulfing candle action there. Then you have like the easy mode trade. We're basically coming down here and you're hitting it. And when you've hit it twice, I mean, when you've hit it once, twice, obviously you got a uh, double bottom scenario kind of thing. But anyway, I, uh, a beautiful wick off of a green zone. You got the wick off of that. Not only that, but it's a doji, doji, doji. You have a bigger candle leaving than arriving. And uh, it is a shaved candle as well. So just beautiful looking thing there. And some of them over here, you have Captain Obvious. You have all the clues. Absorption bubble, Professor Line, Green Zone. One wick, not one wick, but two wicks off of the down area. You have an exhaustion candle here. You have a big, ooh, final push to the end zone candle for the, uh, uh, for the bears there. And then... Off we go to the races. So sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's just like, eh, it's just like Captain Obvious, right? It's just like Captain Obvious. And here's one of those things, too. I mean, would you trade this bounce here? And obviously, the answer is no, uh, because there's just no red. I mean, it's a bounce. It's supposed to be going down. Where is the red candle? I mean, where is the red? You got green, 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 and it goes all the way through here. That's just not a good uh, evidence here. Also, you have a red candle here. Is it bouncing off of this? You do have a doji. You do have a red candle at the professor line. Well, where's your candle body under candle body, right? You remember, we talked about candle body under candle body. And if you just don't have candle body under candle body, all you have is one red candle, one red doji. That's it. It's just not a lot of evidence. It's just not going to be enough evidence uh, for you to, uh, you know, it's just not enough evidence for me to proceed. I need candle body under candle body. I need some type of follow-up. Otherwise, it's just a dick tease at that point. And here you got a beautiful with trend bounce. We're with the trend. We got to bounce off a green zone, off a pullback. Up we go. And then we bounce off another green zone. So it looks like a pullback. You got a trend coming back here and thrusting downward, as they say. So here you have an exhaustion candle, the final push towards the end zone for the green. You got the delta intensity candle poking out like a little dicky down there, like a like a like a um, you know like uh, my dicky in high school, you know. But yeah, you got a little dicky down there, and I uh, got the final push towards the end zone. The green's like, oh, if I'm done, it has an orgasm. We got a doji on a green zone. This is going to be a with trend, a with trend. That's a triple triple mark, triple checker mark for me. But yeah, you have candle body under candle body. Once this closed, I'd be like, yes, I'm going in. And that's one thing too, right? If you got a good pullback here and it's just an obvious 
bounce in the direction of the trend. It's an easy, easy mode bounce. Then this is great. Like you wake up late, you're not in the trend or you want to add. You're not sure where to add when the trend is over, whatnot. But yeah, pretty nice indeed. So you can see we bounced off of a, uh, a, a uh, over here, we got a professor line plus we got a volume and balance. So you got a candle gap professor line double. You got a big wick off of that. You got a green doji, green doji. It could be going up a little bit. We dip down and then up we go with trend bounce it as. So let's go to a uh, some ex more examples and let's do the quiz. So we're going to take a peek at the evidence one more time. Doji, doji, doji. Delta intensity spike. A little dicky down there. A wick off of a line or an area. We have candle body under or over candle body. Absorption bubbles and the various shit that displays on the stream. So we'll do a little quiz here. Is this a good bounce? Is this a good trade? Now, how much evidence for a trade do you see here? And would you take this trade? You can pause the video, answer in three, two, one. And I would take this trade because it has five pieces of evidence. Let's look at what they are. Number one, you have a green zone. Green zone, again, pretty decent, pretty decent results off of that. Number two, you have a volume and balance or a candle gap, the blue line. So you have one, two things to bounce off of. So you got two bounce zones, two bounce items. So that's one, that's two. Number three, you got a wick. So you come up here, you got a Wikipedia, right? We got a wick, you got a beautiful wick. The wick resolved the candle gap. So now the candle gap is no more. It resolved it, it came back and addressed it. The wick is huge, that's what she said. Straight up, it goes way, way deep into the green zone. That's number three. Uh, number four, obviously, number three, it's also a doji. Number four, we have a beautiful follow-up here. Candle body under candle body. I think number four is the fact that it's a doji. So, oh, let's go back to the drawing. Here we go. All right. So the next thing is we have candle body underneath candle body, which obviously we have a candle body here. We have a candle body here. And this is a strong one. No wick at top. Hardly any wick at the top. Hardly any wick at the close. So hardly any wick at the open. Hardly any wick at the close. That's called a shaved candle. That basically means that you don't have any indecision, right? A wick is a, is a little bit of a failed breakout. So you have a big failed breakout up here, failed breakout down here. But you don't have any failed breakouts on this candle. It's a solid movement. It's solid as a rock. Then you have, a obviously, a buy signal. And this drops a candle gap, which, again, Al Brooks, you got a gap between two candles. That's a sign of strength. So you have just a lot of evidence here, probably seven pieces of evidence to go forth with that. So let's move on to the next. And number two, would you take this trade? And how much evidence can you spot? Pause the video because the answer is in three, two, one. I would absolutely take this trade. The, the main feature... The main feature here is this massive ass absorption bubble right here. That is just massive absorption bubble. And again, absorption bubble is just a lot of people trading, a lot of people hitting the th buy, a lot of, well, the stock market is basically just one, um, you know, one organization against another organization. So I call it spy versus spy. So you have one institution, another institution, lots of institutions and their bots and their programs basically buying here. But do you see a big green candle? I mean, a lot of orders is fine, but you need to see a big green candle. Again, if I ordered 20 cheeseburgers from McDonald's, they're expecting me to pull up and pay for it. They're not expecting me to drive off. And what you have is a drive off. You have a drive away here because you have one big ass wick, which again is a failed breakout to the upside. A lot of orders, but no big green candle. That is absorption bubble, absorption bubble, you have an absorption bubble. And that's the, the main meat and potatoes here. And when you have something that large with a wick this big, especially at, I mean, even if it's not at a green zone or a professor line, because you got both, you got a professor line here, 
you get a green zone here. So you got a, a double, a double whammy there. Even if it's, even if there's nothing there, like no green zone, no professor line, I'll probably still trade it just because that's a massive amount of orders that got eaten up. So obviously number one, the way, obviously the number one, the mainstay here is this absorption bubble here and a massive absorption bubble here. Like we really wanted to push up here and we really, really, really wanted to push up here, but it got eaten up. So that is number one. Number two, obviously, is the massive wick. Number three is going to be the doji. Number four is going to be professor line here. Number five is going to be that. And uh, number six, we have candle body underneath the candle body. Now, is it shaved? Now, there are a lot of people be like, man, it's not a shaved candle. And you also have as well trampoline, which is a reversal signal. So you also have that. So, so anybody coming in be like, yo, I just don't see a shaved candle. You're right. I mean, you do have a little bit of a wick here and a wick here on the red candle, but still, you have a candle body here and a candle body underneath it here and a candle body underneath it here. So you have candle body picking up where the last candle body left off. This candle body pick it up where this candle body left off. This candle body pick it up where that candle body left off. So you have a consistent, basically that is just a consistent one big ass red candle separated by time. One minute, 2000 tick, whatever, right? This is just one big fucking red candle separated by time. If you're on one minute, two minute, 2000 tick, separated by ticks. So that's basically what that is. So of course I would take it probably, it's a lot more in four, probably like seven pieces of evidence and the mainstay being that absorption bubble being this big with a big wick, even if there was no uh, zones to bounce off of, I, I would still trade it. We got two more to go. Would you take this bounce to the upside? Do you think this is going to bounce to the upside? Check it out. Answer in three, two, one. And the answer is yes. We have a shit ton of evidence over here. Look at the evidence over here. All right. We have a green zone, Captain Obvious. Green zone down here. We're wicking it once, twice. We're wicking the zone to the pixel once and twice. We have a doji. So there's two. We have two wicks and a doji. There's two big pieces of evidence. Get a green zone. There's your third piece of evidence. Now, down here, we have a delta intensity candle. And we have the, oof, the final push down, the finale of the red, the finale. You got a little candle, little candle, huge push into the end zone. Look, they got all of the energy they had left on that, on that drive to the end zone, and they pushed into the end zone, made a score. So the delta intensity indicates, in this particular instance, an end of a trend because it's accompanied by this massive sudden candle, no wick on either side, push into the end zone. So that means that red is dead. Red dead redemption, part three, part two, part one. Doji, wick, green zone. Got a lot of good stuff here, man. A lot of good stuff here. You got candle body over candle body. I know you can barely see it. You got candle body over candle body, 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 candle body over candle body. In addition, the green body is bigger than the red body. So the green is more powerful than the red in this case. Final push into the end zone. You got a kick to the field goal. They got a point for a field goal kick here. And now the green's taken over. They're ready for the kickoff. And the green is going to be bigger than the red. Another push down. So obviously more than five pieces of evidence, probably seven. But still, it's just a great, great trade. And the final, the final quiz, would you take a bounce to there? Would you take a bounce to there? And why? How much evidence do you see? Go ahead and pause the video because your answer is in three, two, one. Absolutely. We have uh, quite a bit of evidence. First off, we're back to delta intensity. You got little green candle, little green candle. Oof. Final push into the end zone. 
end zone push, doji, field goal, kick off to the other team. But here's your big push with absorption bubble, absorption bubble. We don't like to go up right now. By itself, that's only one piece of evidence. That's only one piece of evidence, boys, by itself. An absorption bubble, an absorption bubble. So if you only have one piece of evidence, I don't trade. I wait until I have four, five, seven, eight pieces of evidence. If I don't see five, six, seven, eight pieces of evidence, I don't fucking trade. I don't fucking trade. And, and I think a lot of people like get upset with me. They're like, how are you getting a, a 700 profit factor? Again, if I don't have five, six pieces of fucking evidence, I don't trade. I don't do it. And this is not something that I'm just an expert at. This is because I've lost thousands and thousands and thousands of fucking dollars by not collecting evidence. Now I collect evidence and I don't lose thousands and thousands of dollars like when I started. So one piece of evidence and that's it. Absorption bubble. Just one piece of evidence. Number two piece of evidence. Obviously the green zone up here. We have doji, doji, doji. That's your third piece of evidence. So number one piece of evidence, you have absorption bubbles. Number two piece of evidence, which number one and a half is the final push. Oof, the final push in the end zone. Accompanied by... A delta intensity candle. A lot of volume, a lot of action here. Final push into the end zone. Then you got a doji. Doji, doji, doji. Right. You got a little more green, but this is for the, the one point kick. And this is the kickoff to the other team. The other team has it now. So doji, doji, doji. There's some more evidence. You got a star, which is a squeezy McSquozy. And the star is saying we're going down. So that's a good piece of evidence. You got candle body, underneath the candle body, underneath the candle body, underneath the candle body, underneath the candle body, underneath the, again, there's one big fucking red candle, but the only reason it's broken out is because ticks are time. There's one big fucking red candle because candle body, under candle body, under candle body. So this is a good trade. This is a good trade. You got to buy signals well, or sorry, sell signals well here. And uh, it's just a, just a fantastic fucking trade. You do have a volume and balance line here, and you did bounce off of it, but it is a counter trend bounce with a doji. This is a one candle bounce, and then you doji out, and then you continue on. So yeah, uh, this is an easy one. That's the final one, man. Hopefully. This has been helpful. Hopefully you are now an evidence collector. You're going to collect shitloads of evidence before you click any fucking buttons because the one thing we don't want to do, and I'll show the slide one more time, is guessing, predicting. Guessing and predicting will make you broke. It will take all of your money. It will blow all of your account because unless you're psychic, Unless you got some tarot cards in the background there or something, you're not going to have a high success rate versus collecting evidence. So my method has been now, it will always be evidence collection, like you're going to prosecute somebody. You need evidence. Thank you for watching.